Hey, welcome back to the organizing tip of the day. Today I wanted to share with you some inspiration, hopefully to inspire you with you and your kids for this summer. I'm doing a mom's summer day camp without any other kids, just me and my kids, a stay at home mom's summer camp. And the reason is I actually had one of you subscribers who asked me for a monthly calendar or activities that I was going to do this summer. I used to do a monthly calendar just like this every month for my daycare kids and I had a different activity planned every day. Once I stopped doing daycare, for some reason I stopped doing this. It's like I didn't have anyone else to hold me accountable to. So I stopped doing the planning part and unfortunately when I stopped doing the planning, I wasn't really doing the follow through. Even though I had really good intentions to do all this fun stuff with my kids, life kind of got in the way and I just didn't do it as much as I should have and wanted to. So I came up with this super amazing um, mom's summer day camp program, which I know I'm gonna stay accountable to because I've written it down, I have a plan, and I'm gonna probably put it on my fridge so my kids hold me accountable too. But anyway, so we'll totally get started. I, it's probably gonna be a long one, <laughs> but um, yeah. I, I was gonna describe each activity. So these are some ideas. If you're a grandma and you're gonna have the kids come for a week maybe to stay with you, uh, your grandkids come, or you just are a working mom and you're looking for some activities on the weekend, or you're looking for stay, play, and, and walk away activities, or you wanna run a little summer day camp because you're a stay-at-home mom too. For your kids, hopefully some of these ideas will work for you. You can find this, you can print it off for free on my website. I'll put the link below. So check it out, let's get started. First, the first week of July, we're gonna have multicultural week. We're gonna start, of course, with Canada Day. Woohoo! we're actually leaving to go for a parade. But if you're not from Canada, still celebrate Canada Day. You can do lots of fun things with leaves. You know, you can make little Canada flags. There's lots of crafts and activities you can find online for Canada Day. Next, we're gonna celebrate Mexico by making pinatas. And usually when we celebrate other countries, we always try to sort of incorporate their cuisine as well. So we'll probably have taco night or nachos or something fun like that. But we are gonna make pinatas, and it's really easy to make a pinata. You use equal parts flour with water. So two cups flour, two cups water, mix it together, then tear strips of paper or newspaper, dip it in and wrap it around each strip on an inflated balloon. Once it's dry, pop the balloon, then fill it with candy and voila, you have a pinata. You can let your kids paint it if you want, or you can just beat on it as is. Fun time. So next we're gonna celebrate China. We'll probably have Chinese food, maybe make paper lanterns, but we're definitely making paper dragons. You can find tons of tutorials on how to do this online. Next, we're actually gonna put our paper dragons on top of our canoe and have a dragon boat race. Right? Super fun. Next, of course, is 4th of July, so we're gonna have lots of fun to celebrate that. We're gonna have a barbecue and Sundays and maybe find some 4th of July USA flag type crafts to do as well. So that's our multicultural week. Next we have camping week and the first thing we're gonna do is put a tent up in the backyard. Leave it there all week long. If you don't have a tent, no problem, you can make one with sheets or a fort or something like that to celebrate this week. Next we're gonna do a flashlight shadow fun. If you haven't done this before, it's really a fun way and a great stay, play, and walk away activity. You shut the lights off, you either take a lampshade off of a lamp and shine it against the wall, or you use flashlights and you have shadow fun. So you can use your fingers for puppets or you can use stuffed animals. You can build a city out of Lego and then like Godzilla it to smash it. There's like tons of fun you can have with shadow fun with a flashlight. <laughs> Seriously, gotta try it. So we're gonna have flashlight fun that day. Then we're gonna make s'mores in the backyard with a campfire. If you don't have a campfire, you can totally roast marshmallows using candles. So you can still have s'mores. It's just chocolate graham crackers, or you can do a s'moreo. Have you heard of this? You open up an Oreo, you toast a marshmallow, you put it in between, you squish it down, and you have a s'moreo. Right? Anyways, on we go. Um, this one here, we're gonna go for a nature walk for camping. And last but not least, we're making a waterbed, an outdoor waterbed. I've seen this on a couple of different blogs. What you do is take a pretty strong uh, tarp, you duct tape all the edges, but you leave a little hole, you insert the hose, you inflate it with water, you know, you fill it up with water, so you fold a tarp in half, you tape all around the edges, you leave a little hole, you fill it up with water, then you tape that one shut, and the kids jump and play on it, and it's just a giant waterbed outside, so fun, and it's like a $5 tarp, so 
that's a really fun activity. Next, we're having water play week. This is so simple. The first time, of course, we're having water gun fight. Might not be into guns, but I'm okay with letting my kids play with water guns. We're having a water gun fight. Then we're making paper boats. We're actually going to uh, float them in the river, I think. But if you have a pool or even a you know, a gutter, you can run the hose out to the gutter and let them like float down to see which one gets to the sewer first. Super fun, paper boat races. Then we're having a beach day. We're going to the beach, but if you don't have a beach, just getting a bag of sand, using it in a tote with some water, you can have really fun sand castles and kids would love that. Next, we're making a slip and slide. We're actually going to use the tarp that we use for the waterbed and just put a hose and a sprinkler on it to make our own slip and slide. Then, last but not least, we have excavating. <laughs> Hope I'm saying that right. It's like excavating, only with ice. You take some small toys and you take plastic bowls and you put the toys in them, fill it up with water, freeze them for a couple of nights in your freezer so they're really, really hard. Then take them out, dump the ice out, and let the kids excavate the toys. So it's called excavating. Takes them a while to chisel out those toys. <laughs> You've got a good hour, you can go do something while they work on the toys they already own, but somehow they really like it. Next we have Dinosaur Week. I'm a big fan of this because you can do so many things. You do have to purchase a couple of things for this week. One is Plaster of Paris. You can get this at the dollar store. Um, so no biggie, some Plaster of Paris. And what I usually have, I already have them, but I get a bag of little dinosaurs like this, little tiny ones from the dollar store, and then I get a couple really big ones. And the first day we're having a dinosaur hunt. It's just like an Easter egg hunt. You literally hide dinosaurs, <laughs> like all over the place. Then the kids run around and find all the dinosaurs, and then they trade them in for a treat. You can do this over and over and over again, or the big kids can hide them for the little kids, or hide them for each other, or you can keep hiding them. Kids love to hunt for stuff. So, dinosaur hunt the first day. Next we have making fossils. And this is where the plaster of Paris comes in. So you mix it up and you put it in like a ball or something, flatten it out, and the kids press things into it to make fossils. So they can press their thumbprints. They can press, I don't know, the little dinosaurs that you've got. They can press bugs from outside. <laughs> I don't know, sticks. They can do lots of things to make fossils. Let them dry and you've got really cool fossils that you can use for the next day for the dino dig. You can either use the little dinosaurs or your fossils or both. If you don't have a sandbox, a bag of sand is around $5. It's really inexpensive or you can just dig it in the dirt outside. I know people who also use rice or corn and they put it in a tote and they bury things and the dinosaurs of the fossils underneath and they have the kids dig like a um, paleontologist to find them. You can also talk a little bit about education, about paleontologists and that sort of thing while they're doing the dino dig. Next, we're having a field trip. We're going to a museum, dinosaur museum. Pretty cool. Uh, but you could also like watch dinosaur movies that day, you know, Land Before Time. I loved those when I was a kid. Who didn't love Land Before Time? Uh, my kids have never seen them. So that's another thing you could do during dinosaur week is watch, you know, some really cool dinosaur movies. And then last but not least, we have making a volcano. Now you can either use your leftover plaster of Paris. Uh, what I usually do is I take a pan and then an empty pot, like a pop bottle inside. And then I like mold around it. So you can do the paper mache to mold around it. You can do plaster of Paris. You can create something yourself out of flour and that sort of stuff. And then what you do inside is you put water and then you put a little bit of um, dish soap, like a teaspoon of dish soap and some baking soda. Some red food coloring makes it extra cool. And then once the volcano around it's all done, you can have the kids paint it, but they don't have to. And then what I wanna do for dinosaur week is put all the dinosaurs all around it, right? Like dinosaur land. And then have them slowly pour in a cup of vinegar and babu, you have a volcano. Super, super, super fun for Dinosaur Week. Way to end it with a bang, right? Next, we have Adventure Week. This one, I'm actually not going to buy anything, but for the first day, make a pirate ship. I am gonna go to Leon's or Tepperman's or a furniture store. They used to give me boxes all the time. They're happy to give you giant fridge and stove boxes. They are already broken down when you go pick them up, but who cares? There's so many tutorials on how to like make using like a box cutter make a giant pirate ship out of boxes that you get for free. So we're definitely doing that with either a fridge box or a stove box. We're making a big old pirate ship. 
for the first day of Adventure Week. Next, we're having a Mad Hatter tea party. It's an Alice in Wonderland tea party, but really we're just having a tea party. <laughs> we might wear crazy hats or get some hats and like decorate them with weird crazy things so it's like a hatter tea party. We might be doing that um, for our tea party. Next we're gonna have a scavenger hunt. We've already got the stuff already made for a scavenger hunt, so it's probably gonna be outdoor stuff like bugs, leaves, birds, stuff like that. If you want to get really creative, you can make like a map around your neighborhood with a hidden prize at the end and send your kids to go find it. I'm probably not going to do that. <laughs> and last but not least, we have a safari bug hunt. So we have old binoculars that we actually have and we're going to head out and try to like, you know, safari, except we have no safari animals around here. So we're going to have bugs where we like look at bugs and we like write down what we have seen, maybe draw pictures of the different kinds of bugs and butterflies and different things we find. We're going to pretend we're on a safari. So that's going to be cool. So this is my July. I can't wait to show you August. If you want to print it off because you like some of these ideas, you want to have it for inspiration, or if you want to do this just like this, it's a PDF. It's free. Download it. You'll find it on my blog. That I think is it. Thanks so much for watching. Um, yeah, hopefully this is, is inspirational to some of you. I know it's going to motivate myself to be a better parent. I'm really excited about that. Sometimes, you know, we get distracted by life and, and we just aren't feeling the motivation. This summer, I hope to look at being a stay-at-home mom like my job, like a career, and working just as hard as it if I would if I was working outside of the house because it's the most important job I'm ever gonna have and I should definitely treat it that way. Anyways, that's your tip and we'll see you next time.